Hello crafty friends, my name is Alicia but you can call me Crafty Owl and it is time for another sheet load rewind. I hope you'll stick around to see what month we're rewinding to and see the set I'm going to make and if you're a channel member find out about an extra special bonus. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Each month I like to stop by and revisit a past sheet load of cards. Sometimes I leave it as is and other times, like today, I'm going to switch it up just a little bit. If you would like to see any of the past rewinds, I do have the playlist linked in the description box below. And at the end of this video, I will tell you how to download the sheet load we're going to rewind to if you don't already have it. Let's find out which month we're rewinding to today. I'm super excited to be revisiting the March 2020 sheet load of cards today. Now you might be wondering why we kind of went back even further because so far in 2023 we have been revisiting 2021 issues. Well last year I was unable to do the rewind for a couple months so sometimes we'll be rewinding back a little bit further. This edition originally called for three 12 by 12 pattern papers and some cardstock to yield nine cards. Well, today we are going to be rotating the sketch for our cards, actually this way, and I'm going to show you how you can cut the pattern paper to make 12 cards instead of just nine. Well, hello crafty friends. It is editing Alicia um, jumping in here and I wanted to say that yielding 12 cards were my famous last words for today's video. Not only was that not the yield, but it seemed as every step that I made in today's video, something went wrong. But I persevered and I hope that you will too through this and we are going to make it out on the other end with a great set of cards. Let's take a look at the main supplies I'll be using before we get started. In front of me are the main supplies I'll be using for today's card. Now an extra special bonus for channel members, which I'll show you how to use later, is a special print and cut SVG file with some large sentiments for you to use. Now if you don't have an electronic cutter, that's okay because I'll tell you as well how you can just print a PDF of the different sentiments. Now I decided to go ahead and try to foil mine, so I got out some gold deco foil. And for my matting, I'm just going to be doing a little bit, I got out kind of this piece of burgundy cardstock. For my papers, I pre-chose three pieces from Echo Park's New Day kit. I'm using this floral with the multicolors, and then I got a couple more subtle patterns with colors that are in that paper to go with it. And the reason I chose the burgundy was because of this darkest flower here. Now as I get into the process, I will be sure to let you know of other tools and products I use, but as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! Before I get started on this small train wreck of a video, I did have a special channel member shout out. I would like to say thank you and welcome to two of my newest Paper Trimmer Level members, Tina Lindsay and Carla Brosnan. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you as well to all of my channel members. You keep me creating here on YouTube and Sheetload of Cards free for all subscribers. If you're ever interested in finding out more about the perks of membership, I do have a link in the description box below. And now let's get started on this set of cards. To get started, I'm going to be cutting the pattern papers. And since I'm going to be rotating the sketch, I always find that it's easier to rotate the cutting guide as well. So this would mean that you would cut columns from your cardstock, 
two that are three inches wide, two that are two inches wide, and then finally two that are one inch wide. Now, if your pattern paper has an orientation, make sure that the first cut you make, that it is sitting correctly before you cut that column. Now, mine don't have an orientation, and I have that branding strip at the bottom, so I went ahead and rotated mine. But you'll see here how I cut those columns. Make sure to keep in mind that this will take the complete 12 inches, so don't do what I call generous cuts by cutting maybe a little bit over the dimensions, cut right at or a little bit under so you don't wind up with one strip at the bottom that isn't quite one inch. Right here you'll see a pause because this is when I first thought, hmm, something might be wrong. I knew my next step was to rotate those columns that we just cut and cut them in the top two into four inch wide sections. And you know what? I was going to get six total because it worked out perfectly. Well, then I realized, wait, my bottom piece has to be four and a half inches and I can't get three of those out of 12. So this is when I decided I must have figured something out wrong. We'll just go ahead and cut these to four inch strips and instead of angling it like the sketch shows, I'll just put it straight across. So I kept cutting, still thinking that I was only going to end up with those 12 cards. I finished cutting the floral piece and then went on to the other two pieces of pattern paper and in hindsight I should have went ahead and stuck with the four and a half inches wide and just cut four pieces that I needed, four A's, four B's, four C's from each sheet and then I would have wound up with my 12 and I could have angled that piece. But you know what? We're going to make this work. My next usual step would have been to move on to the sentiment piece and its mat, CS1 and CS2, but because I'm doing mine differently, I did move on to CS3, which is the mat for what was the diagonal strip. I needed, I thought I needed one piece of cardstock and I was going to cut these into four inch wide strips since that's what the other piece was now. And then I was going to cut until I got nine. For some reason, I thought I still needed nine. Well, later I did figure out, oh no, I need 12. And then I figured, oh no, I need 18. Before I moved on to putting together the card kits, I wanted to go ahead and get the mat put on piece C, so that's what I started working on. These will be flush at the sides and a little bit of that burgundy peeking out at the top and bottom. Now I find it easiest when you have things that need to line up to bring in something that has a ledge. So I just brought in my mini score buddy because it was handy and then I used that raised lip to help me place those right up against each other. I just tried to center it left to right then press both pieces against that ledge. Then I got to this point where I had tons of the pattern paper strips but nowhere near enough cardstock. I'm like Oh yeah, because I need 12. I cut too many of the pattern paper strips. So you know what? I'll just bring in the burgundy cardstock and cut, I think I ended up five more because I thought I had extras. So I did bring that back in again, cut what I thought I would need. Then as I started laying out the pieces to put my card kits together, I'm like, wait, I did need 18 of those little skinny mats. So I brought in the rest of the piece I had gotten and just a little bit of a scrap to finish those off. And now here's a look at all of the pieces and we're gonna put together what we'll need for each card. I always like to do this ahead of time so later when I'm putting pieces on the card bases, I don't end up with two of the same patterns on the front. I had three that had the floral A, the blue B, and then the green C. Now for the next three, I grabbed the same floral, but I skipped over to the green B and came back for the blue C. I will leave that entire process in, but if you don't want to watch it, you could skip ahead about a minute.
By now, I did have it straight that I would be making 18 cards, so off camera I cut and folded 18 card bases. The way that I'm going to rotate the sketch, piece B, or the 2 inch wide strip would go on the left, but you can definitely change this up, whatever you think looks best with your pattern papers and your focal points. I'm going to go ahead and stick with having B on the left, so I'm going to add adhesive to the back of that, and then I place it on the left of the card base, so there's about an eighth of an inch border on the top, bottom, and left. Then I'm going to take piece A, which is 3 inches wide, and put that on the opposite end. Now there is a little gap there, and that is what our little matted strip is for. Now, like I showed you there, you could move it more to the left or more to the right. Just make sure that you're covering up that gap. I continued adding these pieces to the front of the cards until all 18 were done, and by this time I was calming down a little bit and feeling much better about the cards. Now it was time to get my cinnamons ready, which again I'm using the special print and cut SVG that I have available to channel members. Now I am no expert at silhouette design software, and I'm not sure what the Brother Scan and Cut can do, even though I have one, I've never tried anything like this, or about a Cricut. So I'm hoping if you're a channel member, you can make use of this in some way. Again, I will have a PDF of the individual sentiments you can just print if you want as well. What I do is I go in and tell my machine that I only want to cut those outside lines. So I turn off cutting on like the thinking of you, the hi, hello friend. That way when I go to send it later to the printer or the cutter, it knows what to do with each one. I then copied and pasted those sentiments into a new silhouette tab and I did go ahead and add the registration marks for a print and cut and then I ungrouped everything and I copied and pasted as many of the sentiments as I could on a single 8.5 by 11. Then I sent it to my printer and I did this on a pretty thin white card stock and then when that was done this piece went on to my silhouette cutting mat and then I came back into my software and I set that off to cut. And here's a little shot at that in action. Once that was all cut, I removed the outside and then I removed the individual sentiments from the mat. And I do that by kind of rolling back the mat and then usually the top or bottom will pop off. It just makes it a little bit easier. This next part was a little experiment. I didn't know how it would work. I got out some of my deco foil, which is a toner foil, and I cut pieces to cover some of the sentiments. Then I sent these through my mink, keeping my fingers crossed, and look at how beautiful these look. So I did go ahead and foil them all. Again, I had 18 sentiments instead of the nine or 12. And here's a look at those finished with all the shine. And then the next step is to get these beautiful sentiments onto the card fronts. Off camera, I did add some strips of foam tape just for a little dimension since the cards are pretty flat so far. And then I placed them kind of where the matted sentiment was on the original sketch. It overlapped the center strip and some of the pattern paper. To finish the cards off, I brought in some of my favorite embellishments. It's the Elizabeth Craft Designs Transparent Slash Gold Glitter Gems. These are just clear stickers, little circles that have like a gold frame and then clear in the middle with some glitter. I like the added sparkle that it adds and they're very economical and lightweight. So I finished adding those to each of the cards and here's a close up look at the finished set.
Wow, well, I am glad these cards are done because like editing Alicia told you, nothing seemed to go right. Um, I about threw them away or recycled them four times, but I'm like, nope, don't let it get the best of you. And I was so excited, you know, to share my special print and cut file. So I kept going. And now that it's done, I am glad that I have 18 more cards to send out. And I hope that you enjoyed this as well, even though it was full of hiccups and stops and starts throughout there. Let me know if you've ever had a horrible, terrible, no good, very bad crafting day down in that comment section below. Um, like I've told a few people, I guess a bad day crafting is still a good day. Am I right? Well, now I want to tell you, if you're a channel member, how you can get the print and cut bonus. So later this morning over on the membership tab, I will have a link to the zip file and that will contain the one sheet that has all of the sentiments with the outlines like you saw me use. And then I will also have a PDF and I will have on each page, I will have multiples of the same sentiment. So you can choose which page or pages you want to print out and then either die cut them with shapes you have or just cut them out with a trimmer into squares or rectangles. Now, if you are watching this later, instead of scrolling all the way down on the membership tab, if you are a member, make sure to check out the monthly blog post and it will be down with the bonus print and cut file section. To find the blog, you might have to scroll down a little bit on the membership tab and you can always reach out to me at the channel members only email address. And now here's a little something for everyone. If you haven't yet downloaded the March 2020 sheet load of cards and you would like to, I'll tell you how to do that now. Now, as always, I do ask that you are subscribed to my channel before you download the file, which I'll tell you where the link is at here in just a minute. Um, it's free, it's quick, it's easy to subscribe. I don't make you send me any proof. Just please make sure you have clicked on subscribe before you click on the file link. You'll find the link to the March 2020 sheet load down in the description box right above my P.O. box address. Below that, it will say to watch the video for a password, but you watching this far is your password. You can download it and just use it on screen, or you can download and print it like I have. Until my next video, which I hope goes a lot better, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.